Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, 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 welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Today we getting ready to go there, family. Um, I really wish this could be a live show, actually. Um and uh but we getting ready to go there and I hope that family, those of y'all who have experience with this or even know somebody experienced with this will be open enough to leave comments about it in the, you know, in the uh, comment section. I got an email from uh, a young lady on yesterday and she was telling me about her narcissistic abuse and the things that had happened to her in her life. And she's living with shame that is so overwhelming because now she's 38 and one of the shameful things that she's having to deal with is that she fathered a child by her sister's boyfriend. Her, her and her sister both share, um, you know, children with the same person. Okay. Bad experience, right? But that's all it is. It's an experience. So, because there's a lot of them. And so, but, but, but what she was saying was the hardest thing for her to deal with was the shame of that. Um, I think guilt is something wrong, you know, that I did or something or whatever. I think, well, I don't know. Shame just seems to be a little bit more harsh. See, shame seems to say there's something wrong with me. I'm I'm just really, really fucked up. But you get it. Um what I try to convey in her is that shame is really strong, but I think that we have all felt that. So what I wanted to do was try to express my version of a shameful act. Uh you know that like I said, I think we all have had things that have made us shame, that may have, may have stuck. I was saying that for me in my life, I that once upon a time, now this is long, 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 long time ago. Um, one of the things that carried a lot of shame for me was that I catfished someone. Yeah, before y'all even knew. We, used to, we didn't have caller ID. We didn't have phone tracking and all that. We used to just pick people up on the phone and call, dial random numbers, play games like that. This is what we did when I was a teenager coming up. And one time, my brother, my younger brother and I, uh, one of my younger brothers, we used to play these games, right? And so uh, one time we got... Uh, caught in a party line, I believe. So what those of y'all who know what party lines is, bam. Okay, we were on the party line. And at that time, we would play games like, you know, talk to people on the phone, you know, pretend like we were different people. Um, I would pretend like I was some, you know, like Roman or somebody, you know, just my alter ego, whatever it was. So, I got, we got, we did this and um, it went on and on and on. I'll tell you the, de you, you can read further about the details of this uh, in my book, but <laughs> we did this and I did this for a while to the point where I actually kind of fell for the person. So when I see catfish on TV now, I really laugh because I was like, I was like 30 years before that. And it was really deep because I got so entrenched in the stuff. I was I was doing all kinds of craziness. I was going to the person's home um, to see if I could pull it off because I was also involved in the theater. And, you know, I thought I could act pretty well at that time, which all this stuff was totally disassociative when I began to think about more and more because at that time, my parents weren't paying any attention to me because they were in their own madness, nor were they paying attention to my brother. So we had was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay. And um 
again, I let this go on and on and on. And the person fell in love with me, too. So she fell in love with me. And I fell in love with her. And so now people are getting hurt because I'm lying. And I know I'm not the person that she thinks that I am. And um, I didn't know how to get out of it. And because I didn't know how to get out of it, I let it continue. And because I, I caught feelings for the individual, I kept it was just a confused type of state. So, you know, I I lived with that. After finally what happened, I can't remember what happened, but we finally stopped it. And I'm thinking this lasted at least, you know, five, six, maybe even seven years. It, it went on for a little while, y'all. Because I, I had to, you know, maneuver and play it. Okay, so, um, again... When I realized, as I got older and I thought about what I had done, it was just, it created a lot of shame for me. You know, not that I didn't pull it off. And when I began to tell some, you know, my people I had been dating now or going to, I said, you know, I did something real crazy, you know, and blah, 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 blah. The point I'm trying to make is the shame of that. It's just really how I felt about the situation is because I was judging myself. Okay. Judging myself for doing that. And I knew it was wrong. Um, what I didn't anticipate was falling in love. And y'all already know puppy love is probably like the strongest love. So when you're a kid or a teenager and you in love, that's probably the hardest thing you could do. Um, but the shame that goes with that, what went with that, was like almost unbearable. Okay? So I know that every day, I want to say to her, every day that you get up or when you're talking and your sister, so now it's then came out about you and your sister sharing the same guy and sharing the same baby. And now how long you say you've been dealing with that for two years now? Because I guess... It's been two years since everybody know found out. Um, the kids look just alike, is what she's saying. The kids look more and more alike, and, and things of that nature. She's has so much regret for what she did to her sister, and I get it. Shame is what we continue to live with when we keep beating ourselves up over what we've done, whether. It was innocently or not. So all I'm trying to say is the guilt of the situation is really something that you going to push off to that child. The shame, I'm saying. And her is going to, she's the baby is going to feel all kinds of weird things growing up if you don't work out this situation. And your own emotions about the situation. So what I did was I found again that book with um from Doctor um was her and her husband I can't think uh Linda Linda and uh John Frill um and what they had to say about shame and I just want you to hear this and hopefully it can minister to you a little bit and anybody else out there that's dealing with some kind of shame whether you catfish somebody or you stole from somebody or you had a, a child out of relation, whatever it is that you feel ashamed about. You know, you had sex with somebody because all these things are just experiences. Again, they're not, they, you know, they're not really you. They're just experiences that you have. And some of us have had some hell of experiences. I know I have. I'm like, some of the stuff, I'm like, I can't believe I did that. Okay. But let me just say this to you. And I want you to, uh, Take this with you today. Uh, it is shame. It is felt by many therapists nowadays. It is thought. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me, let me get my eyes right. Shame. It is felt by many therapists nowadays that shame is at the very base of all addictions. Okay. 
a, a Gershon Kaufman, a psychologist who did some pioneering writing about shame, believes that shame comes from the damaging and interpersonal bridge between two people, especially when one of those people is more powerful than the other. Shame comes from not being able to depend on someone. It is a feeling of being exposed as helpless. It can best be expressed as feelings worthless than I did before that bridge was broken. That is, we feel worthless. I made a mistake because becomes I am the mistake. Did you get that? Imagine a child who is criticized by her parent. The criticism breaks the bridge between the parent and child. The relationship suddenly comes into question. I have done something awful, we say to ourselves, and mommy doesn't love me, approve of me, care for me, etc., 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 anymore. She won't be there for me now when I need her. We feel ashamed of ourselves. We feel hopeless. We feel helpless. And we feel scared. To help clarify the dynamic of shame uh, induction, imagine yourself surrounded by all of your loved ones. You are in the center and they are encircling you. Each and every one of them is pointing a finger at you. Just imagine this now, okay? Their eyes are glaring at you. I want you to stay in this. Sometimes you get that feeling in your stomach, I know, and you're just like, I don't want to think about that. Let me just, mm, 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 mm. But try to go through it. Just try to, try to go through it. I guarantee you, if you just sit there and go through it, you'll make it to the other side. You'll live. And you'll be better for it. Okay, imagine everybody pointing their finger at you, eyes glaring and saying, shame, 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 shame on you, shame on you. You are bad, you stupid, you are ugly, you are clumsy. That is the essence of what shame feels like. See that? It is ostracism. It is being cut off from the group. It's being cut off from the human race. Nothing you did, or I did, or any one of us for that matter. Unless, I mean, and it, it depends on the context. Text. Nobody deserves that. Be cut off from the human race. I don't even know if there's a context that that, that, that would happen in. I really don't. I mean, because it's just, again, it's just an experience. But let me move past that. From your most precious support, a child can be corrected without being shamed. But when the inner core of the child is left with a haunting voice inside saying, I am bad, then we speak in the shame, you know, and just watch your uh, kids, your children, your grandchildren, you know, watch how they are when they respond, when you say something, or if if you have a correction and, and, and they come to you, they want to make sure that you still connected. They want to make sure that you still love them because that is so important. Just because I've done something that you don't like doesn't mean you don't like me. Oh. Come on, y'all. Come on. Somebody come on up in here. Y'all get what I'm saying? Because if you don't look at your children that way, and if we don't even see that shame, and for you, how was it, you hey, and for you, sweetheart, to be covering all of that and feeling all that inside and have a child to raise in that circumstance, do you understand how that's going to pass on to that child? 
if you don't understand that that was an experience, and I'm sure you had a whole bunch of them in your life. That one was a bad one. Nah, it was one you could learn from. Okay? But in it, you have a beautiful you know, a child out of it. Okay? And um, that child is totally innocent of the circumstances that it came to birth in. And you don't need to carry that shame of that because that one experience or the few experiences, as you said, you're better now. You're wiser now. And you know, you don't want to put yourself in that situation again because of the um, harm that it, it it will, you know, do to yourself and your family member. But you were taken advantage of by a person that was a lot older than you. And so the shame really should be so much more on that person than it is on you. But in my opinion, but again, you know, can't tell you how to feel, baby. It's just that I think it's just a, an experience. It's that you got to get past that experience so you can um, begin to understand that out of something that you felt so dirty, look, look what clean came out of it. And when you smell that baby when they first put it in, it smells so clean and fresh, innocent and pure. So, when um, adults, as adults, this core of shame is usually well hidden from us. Not necessarily from the others, but it's hidden from us. We hide it with anger or sadness or depression or for many of us, with one or more addictions. We hide our shame. Don't do that. She didn't return my phone call. Who needs her? I'll go out with the guys tonight and I'll get drunk. The boss that like my report, I'll fix him. Don't get mad. Get even. Mom and dad don't like the way I dress. They don't like the shape of my chin. Who needs them? I'll just sleep around with all the boys. They're all interested in me anyway. My husband doesn't think that I'm spontaneous enough. Who needs to be spontaneous? I can work circles around him and make three times what he makes. Work addiction? You must be kidding. I'm just not a loser. A friend of ours, John Hoserman, describes shame as like, shame like this. I passed by the mirror and was surprised to see that it thought enough of me to reflect my image. Listen to that. Ain't that sweet? I passed by the mirror and was surprised to see that the mirror thought enough of me to reflect my image. Shame also comes from being spoiled because we never learn to be self-reliant and autonomous. We remain overly dependent on our families for a sense of well-being, which leaves us helpless and paralyzed as we face the outside world. Parents who give their children too much, who do too much for them, who protect their children from life's pain are not doing their children any favors. They're not. Spoiling a child is a form of emotional abuse. All right. I hope y'all like that little lesson or a little tip that I wanted to share with somebody out there who's going through something right now. And uh, because of that, I'm hoping that you 
that doesn't make you um, dwell in what you think is wrong about your situation, but just help you into seeing um, what's right about it. What's right about you, what's right about your baby, what you're supposed to learn through this experience. And I hope that that's the work that you try to do. I'm not a therapist. I ain't nothing like that. That's just my opinion, my humble opinion. I thank you for asking me the question. And I thank you for trusting me with it. And that I would have something to say back to you. But I hope that that suffices, okay? In the meantime, you look after that baby of yours and love yourself and love the baby too. And keep looking inside yourself and above for answers, okay? If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share for the rest of my family. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.